Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Ascension Day evening prayer. My name is Pastor Seth Novak, and on behalf of the entire community of Anus Day Lutheran Church, thank you for being part of this service tonight. Our building, of course, may be closed, but you know that the church is still open. Today we celebrate Ascension Day, which is, there's no way around it, it's a strange holiday. It's weird, it's just downright weird, because today is the day we celebrate, if that's the right word for what we're doing, we celebrate Jesus leaving. This is a holiday recognizing the absence of God. Now, I think that's why this holiday is so important because that's how most of our lives are. They're marked by the absence of God. We may have those moments of um, spiritual awakening or those mountaintop experiences where we feel God so strongly with us, but for the most part, our entire lives are lived in God's absence, with the awareness of God's absence. But today we remember that even absence, when it comes to God, even absence can be a testimony of presence, or a way of being present. I'll tell you a little about what I mean. My mom has been dead for 30 years, almost 30 years. I've lived uh, almost twice as much of my life without her as I lived with her. And that's kind of a strange place to be. But it also means that my relationship with her is very different than it was. Um, my grief for her has changed a lot over the last 20 years, 30 years. Um, but just because she's gone doesn't mean that she's not here with me in a very real way. It's different. It's not how I'd like it to be. But that truth of her being gone and that effect that it has on me is in itself a way that she is present with me all the time. And that's kind of what this holiday celebrates, what it recognizes, that absence can actually be presence. That's the mystery of faith, that in Christ, both Christ among us, in the flesh, and also in Christ absent from us, we are connected with him and with God and with believers of every time and place. This worship service is a great example of what I'm talking about. As we record this, as I record this, it's four o'clock on a Tuesday. When you watch this, I know it's at least 7 p.m. on Thursday because that's when we're airing it, but maybe it's later, maybe it's nine or 10 o'clock and the sun has gone down, or maybe it's Friday or Saturday, or maybe you've just been down a YouTube tunnel and you did some strange keyword search that brought up this video and you're watching this months or years after I recorded it. And yet, through the magic of cyberspace, through the mystery of faith, we are all together in this worship service. All of us, across time and space, physical distance, temporal distance, we are here together right now, whenever now is. That presence, that way that we are with one another, is no less real and true than any other way of being together. It's not exactly in the way we would like, obviously, we would much prefer to be gathered together physically. But even this act, even this state of being separated, is something that brings us together. It's an experience that we all share. And we look forward to a time when we will be together again. Um, we look forward to a time when we can gather in our building for worship, when uh, we can shake hands with strangers and hug people again and go out and eat in restaurants without having to worry about who else might be there. Um, and in a way, that's also what this holiday testifies to. 
Because even though this absence of Christ and of God is a reality now, we hope and expect a time when our experience is marked not by absence but by presence. We hope for a time when we will experience God the way that we want to, and that we will be with one another in the way that we wish we could be. That our union in Christ will feel more real. And so, yeah, today we celebrate Jesus leaving, because in that act of leaving, even absence itself becomes a sign of presence, testifies to the way that we are really together. Just like in Jesus' crucifixion, death itself becomes a sign of new life. So, thank you for being with me today in a very real way in this time of prayer. If you would like to follow along with our service, I'm uh, just doing this straight from our Red Evangelical Lutheran Worship Hymnal. We start on page 309. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and illumine your church. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. We are illumined by the brightness of his rising. Death has no more dominion over us. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Please join me in giving thanks for light. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you called light into being. You set lights in the sky to govern the night and day. In a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, you led your people into freedom. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, for you are merciful, and you love your whole creation. And with all your creatures we give you glory, through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Psalm, and it comes from Psalm 141. O Lord, I call to you. Come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch before my mouth, O Lord, and guard the door of my lips. Let not my heart incline to any evil thing, let me not be occupied in wickedness with evildoers, nor eat of their sweet foods. But my eyes are turned to you, Lord God. In you I take refuge. Strip me not of my life. I invite you to join me in singing our hymn.
first reading this evening comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. From Paul, who is by God's will an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's people in Ephesus, who are faithful in their life in union with Christ Jesus, may God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. God had already chosen us to be God's through our union with Christ, so that we would be holy and without fault before God. Because of this love, God had already decided that through Jesus Christ, we would become God's children. This was God's pleasure and purpose. Let us praise God for God's glorious grace, for the free gift given us in God's dear Son. For by the sacrificial death of Christ we are set free, that is, our sins are forgiven. How great is the grace of God which God gives to us in such large measure. In all wisdom and insight God did what God had proposed, and made known to us the secret plan already decided to complete by the means of Christ. This plan which God will complete when the time is right is to bring all creation together, everything in heaven and on earth, with Christ as the head. All things are done according to God's plan and decision, and God's union with Christ because of God's own purpose, based on what God had decided from the very beginning. Let us, then, who are the very first to hope in Christ, praise God's glory. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> The Gospel reading <clears throat> comes from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Then Jesus said to his disciples, These are the very things I told you about while I was still with you. Everything written about me in the Law of Moses, the writings of the prophets, and the Psalms had come true. Then he opened their scriptures, their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, This is what is written. The Messiah must suffer and must rise from death three days later. And in his name, the message of repentance and forgiveness of sins must be preached to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And I myself will send upon you what my Father has promised. But you must wait in the city until the power from above comes down upon you. Then he led them out of the city as far as Bethany, where he raised his hands and blessed them. As he was blessing them, he departed from them and was taken up into heaven. They worshipped him and went back to Jerusalem, filled with great joy, and spent all their time in the temple, giving thanks to God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For you, Lord, have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. You have mercy on those who fear you, from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. You have filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. You have come to the aid of your servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy, 
the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the health of the creation, for abundant harvests that all may share, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For public servants, the government, and those who protect us. For those who work to bring peace, justice, healing, and protection in this and in every place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel, for those who are sick and suffering, for those who are in captivity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance in the time of affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all servants of the Church, for this assembly, and for all people who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious God. Giving thanks for all who have gone before us and who are at rest, rejoicing in the communion of saints, we commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to you. Through Christ our Lord, to you, O Lord. <clears throat> Let us pray. Almighty God, your only Son was taken into the heavens and, into, and in your presence intercedes for us. Receive us and our prayers for all the world, and in the end bring everything into your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Sovereign and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding Keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I invite you to share a gift of that peace with one another. Amen.